Hey, I'm TJ Schwanke, and welcome to Outdoor Quest TV. You know, whether it be with rifle or bow, one thing that far few hunters do is practice with their weapon of choice under actual field conditions. You know, you'll see rifle hunters, they'll sit at the bench all day long, happy to shoot tiny little groups on paper. Archers will be at the range all day long, shooting at block targets from no one ranges. You know, and while this does help familiarize you with your rifle or bow, it really does little to prepare you for actual field hunting conditions. So we like to engage in what we call practical practice. And what that sees us out with our rifle and bow practicing under actual field conditions. So once we've figured out a load that our rifle likes and we have it zeroed, we rarely ever shoot off the bench again. Now we do a lot of long range shooting, so a lot of our practice is done from the prone position. And there's two ways we do that. One is just using a rest like this backpack, and the other way is using a rifle equipped with a bipod. Now, when we're hunting in the mountains, say for sheep or something, we rarely carry a bipod just because it's heavy, so that's when we're gonna be shooting off our pack. But if we're in the foothills or on the prairies, we pretty much always have a bipod on our rifle. So these are two very practical ways for us to practice. Now, it looks pretty straightforward. Just get down and shoot from the prone position, but there's a few tips that'll help you shoot better. And the first is if you're using a pack, Set the rifle on the pack lengthwise instead of putting that pack sideways. What that does is it really supports your rifle a lot more. And there's one tip I want to give you whether you're shooting off the backpack or whether you're shooting off the bipod. And that's when you get down behind the rifle. Rather than putting your hand up here on the forestock, take your free hand and bring it back here. And you can just kind of grab, grab the back of the stock a little bit if you want or grab the sling swivel. And what this does is stop you from jerking on the front of it. It will make you way more accurate than you've ever been before. And if you've got proper eye relief on your scope, you're never gonna get hit in the eye. Now, let's go take a look at a big mule deer I shot in Southern Alberta a few years ago using this exact bipod. You are the mule deer master. I don't know about that. <laughs> Man, that was a lot of fun. Look at him. Beautiful, beautiful old prairie buck, eh? Oh, man. Oh. Beautiful. I what told you you had a sticker. Yeah, right there. You're right. <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful buck, though. Holy. Easy dandy. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Zeiss, we make it visible. Defense aerosols, bear spray, for when your life depends on it. Sacco rifles, demand perfection. Closed captioning, brought to you by PSE Archery, the precision compound bow experience. Introducing the Carbon Air Stealth 35, along with a new Evolve cam system powered Evoke 35 and Evoke 31, PSE's newest precision compound bows. Now one other tip I want to give you when you're shooting off of a bipod, especially when you're shooting at longer ranges, is to find a support for the back of your rifle as well. It's just going to make it that much more steady. Now I've seen shooters use small shooting bags, I've seen little sticks that cross, but quite honestly one of the easiest things you can use and something you pretty well always have with you is a jacket. And just roll it up the size you need and just slip it underneath the back of the rifle. Put your hand back here where you want it. And then when you know it's perfectly lined up and you're right on target, just take this hand away. And if those crosshairs don't move, you know you're going to be super steady and there's pretty well no way you can miss. 
Now, let's go check out a BC goat hunt that Vanessa was on, where she used exactly this technique. How you feel. And if you don't like it, okay. One of the things here is shooting at 427 yards, so going downhill a little bit. So I want to compensate. So I'm going to put the 400 yard crosshair on him, dial my scope to 11, which by the ballistic calculator is what we figured would be perfect. I just want to make sure I am fully comfortable. And basically, well, my rule of thumb is when I remove my hands, the gun doesn't move, but the crosshairs still are where I want them to be, I'm good. So I may fidget for a while here. But this is a really, really important shot. Four twenty three, so he's going down. Got lots of time. Oh. Neck. <laughs> that was a hit. <laughs> the curse is over. Holy That's where I shot him from. Right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's been an adventure to say the least. You know, if you're ever planning on going to Africa or Europe or even right here in North America, you're going to find yourself shooting off your shooting sticks one day. The greatest thing is they get you up above tall cover and allow you to have a really steady rest from the standing shooting position. I like these three-legged sticks and I'm going to show you why. There's a number of reasons. So when you set up the three-legged sticks, make sure one of the legs is pointing directly away from you. And I'm gonna show you why. I like to step in like this. And so I like to have that opening here so I can step in. And that allows me to have a little bit of flex in my knees. So I'm gonna put the rifle up. Right now you can see I'm actually sitting too low. I've got too much flex in my knees. So the great thing about the three-legged sticks, I can adjust the height simply by moving that front leg. I just want a little bit of flex. I don't wanna be standing too straight or too far down and this is about perfect here. Now, when you're holding your rifle, a lot of people want to hold like this. And I find you get a lot of twist in your rifle when you do that. So there's a couple things you can do. If you don't have really long arms, one thing you can do is actually grab the top of the stick and grab around the sling swivel. And you'll see that gives you a really steady rest. But what I really prefer to do, and the Sacco Bavaria in the stock is actually designed to do this, is put this finger behind here, this finger in front, and hold everything like this. And I'm just gonna put a slight bit of pressure back, and that is as steady as you can be. But practice, practice, practice. Let's go to Romania, and I'll show you how all this practice paid off on a big fallow deer buck. Magnificent, magnificent animal. Let's go see him. Actually, best time. <laughs> see you, my friend. <laughs> oh. What a magnificent animal. Holy. Big, huge. Oh. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Old. Yeah. Ready. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Stony Creek Hunting Gear. It's in the blood. Loa Boots, simply more. Silver Willow Taxidermy, see the difference. Safari Club International Canada, first for hunters. So another really good habit to get into when you're shooting off sticks is to maintain cheek weld in between shots. And what I mean by that is a lot of people will shoot and then they'll lift their head up like this to see what they've done. And what you're doing is you're wasting a lot of valuable seconds, which when you're hunting dangerous game can be life or death. So what you want to do, get your cheek weld, take your shot and then don't move. Up with the bolt, back. And that way your eye never comes off the target. Now, let's head to Tanzania and see one of the most classic dangerous game hunts of all, the Cape Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next one, Neil. Come on, one Next one. You got him? Talk about a scramble when you, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden like the wind just kept switching, they'd smell us and they'd run a little bit and all of a sudden we're running beside them and boom, they're like 20 meters and there's, I don't know, two or 300 buffalo there and all of a sudden the one big bull, he just stood out in the open and uh, had to wait for the camera and then he ran a little bit and turned again and I said, Vanessa, have you got him? She's like, yep. And, I hammered him. I gave a little wide. But... Good. <sighs> Heritage safaris here in Tanzania in the Salud Game Reserve. I don't know. It just, this is real deal Africa. It just doesn't get any better than this. You hunt hard, you work hard, you get great results. Thank you, Patty. No, well done. Good. Yes. Good to have you here. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Teaching. Now another really fun exercise we do for practical practice is what we call spatial awareness. It's just knowing what's around you and where your next shooting position is. So anytime I'm walking through the woods, I'm always looking for that next perfect shooting position. So I know I've got a mound here if there's an animal way out there. I know I've got a tree here I can rest against. It's really important to not only be aware around you what's for animals, but where you are gonna take that next shot from. And this is something that most hunters don't do very well at. So. One thing we like to do is get your partner behind you and just randomly every once in a while, they'll call out, there's an animal 300 yards to your left. And what you have to do is react quickly to the situation. Now, if that animal was close, I could just come up and offhand, but at 300 yards, there's no way I'm gonna have to. So now I'm gonna have to move, look for the perfect shooting position for that distance. So I've got a nice log down here. I can just cozy up to it and there it is. Now. When we were in South Africa a couple years ago, I had to make a split second shot on a big Barbary sheep. And I think I found the perfect shooting position. Do you put it on? See if you can get steady on that, on that shot there. Just, if you're just to the right of the bush, in the middle of the herd, there's one that's darker than the others. You'll, you'll stand out, he's one of them, he's that nice big male in the middle. Got a feet. In the rocks? In the rocks there, yeah, yeah. He's got a, a female just to the left of him. And there's sort of a gap about to the, the group is to the left and then the others are to the right. He's sort of slapping them with. If you can get yourself nice and see, it's a far shot. Okay, can you pick him out there? He's, he's in the, right in the middle of the group. Yeah, the nice dark one. 450? Yeah, 450. So 
Yeah, that's him. With the U right behind him. There you turn. Nice. Where do you turn broadside? Turn, you fool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give him a go. Okay, and he still he hasn't moved his accent space, still broadside. You got him. Standing broadside. Turn a little bit. Got him. He's hit. Yeah, he's getting up. And he's climbing up his, the bottom when he falls over. He fell, fell oh my goodness, what a shot. Oh. He's rolling down that. Whoa, slowly, slowly, <laughs> slowly, slowly. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. Deluxe Wall Tents. Built in Canada for Canadian conditions. Midland Radios, communication for every adventure. Tika Firearms, second to none. So obviously a tree or a fence post makes a great rest when you don't have anything else. There's one tip I wanna give you when you're shooting off of trees or fence posts, and that's to grab the tree and the rifle together. And you wanna just lock the two together, and this gives you an incredibly steady rest. Now, when we were in Australia a couple years ago, we decided to go hunt wild ox, and I had no idea how difficult they were to hunt and how wily they were. So I ended up getting one quick opportunity at an ox. There was a tree nearby, and let's see what happened. Front of the shoulder. Hit him again. You got him. Good shot. Okay. You've got him. He's done. He's over. Finished. Good shot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So on that same hunt in Australia, Vanessa had a chance at a giant water buffalo, and he was across a river, and again, her only option was to rest against a tree. Let's see how she made out. In the mud. It looks as though he's coming past that tree, so let's just wait, okay? Just take it easy, yeah, just wait. All right. Yes, okay, he's gonna move past it. Okay, here he comes. Right, uh, okay, he's lifted his leg out. Now you can see the leg, can you see it? Right, right. Wait a minute, wait, let me look. Got him good. Through the shoulder. That's it. He's done. Good shot. <laughs> we got it. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. We had to. 
Well, as you can see, practical practice is the cornerstone of becoming a really proficient hunter. Hopefully these few tips we offered help you in your hunting endeavors. These companies have provided products and services that are critical to hunts conducted on Outdoor Quest TV. You can check us out online at OutdoorQuestTV.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.